Welcome to Residential Tech Talks. I'm Jeremy Glowacki, Executive Editor of Residential Tech Today. On this week's podcast, Patrick Gall, known to his friends and colleagues as PG, joins us from the Denver, Colorado area, where he is hard at work in channel development for a relatively new smart light switch brand called Oro. PG and I last saw each other in person a couple years ago at a Sonos event in Fenway Park in Boston. At that time, he was helping develop the custom integration channel for that popular audio brand. Now with Oro, he is working with an equally stylish and consumer-friendly product with a lot of potential for human-centric applications and integration with many other established brands. And PG is just the right guy to help spread the word to the professional installation community. PG, thanks for joining me today. Great to see you again. Yeah, thank you, Jeremy. It's great to be here. It's uh, great to have a chance to catch up with you and to uh, share a little bit more about my new adventure at Oro. Well, like I said in the intro, um, you and I kind of worked together previously uh, during, I guess, what would have been the tail end of your tenure at Sonos. And, um, you know, that being one of the best known audio brands um, to consumers, I think, um, you know, you had not as much of a challenge there with the consumers, but you're trying to make inroads with the custom integration channel. Um, could you explain what being a channel manager at Sonos entailed for you? Yeah, so um, you know, I spent 10 years at Sonos, um, both here in the US and, and most recently in Europe. And um, a bulk of that time was with uh, their what, the, what Sonos calls their installed solutions business, you know, their, their professional installer business. And um, I had the opportunity to um, work in a couple of different roles, both on the marketing side and in the sales side. When you and I met in uh, in Boston at Fenway Park a few years ago, I was leading the marketing efforts for that installed solutions channel, which for many, many years, um, frankly, we didn't do much marketing with the channel. Um, you know, we had some great products. We had a lot of great channel efforts, but marketing was one of those things that we just overlooked. So, you know, I had the opportunity to really write the first marketing strategy, but also be the same person to execute it. So from you know, how we showed up publicly at events like the Cedia Expo to dealer communications, you know, really just trying to drive a lot of tactics that with the dealer base, you know, helped to build uh, trust and credibility with with the dealers, which, as we know, is so, so key to this channel, uh, it being a, a B2B channel. Yeah. And, and obviously, um, like I said, Sonos really got a, a good foothold with the consumer um, market first and uh, had to kind of build that reputation with the with the dealers who never like when a product goes directly to the consumer when it comes out that happens a lot <laughs> with products but um, then then brands do see the value in the professional installation and then they get more sophisticated too as they develop products but um, then you uh, I was surprised when we spoke um, in a call about a month ago that you had um, kind of disappeared off to the Netherlands was it uh, to work on that European uh, adventure for Sonos so tell me about that a little bit more yeah, so a bit of personal background. I was actually born in the Netherlands, and um, I had always hoped that um, with Sonos, I would have the opportunity to go work over there because their European headquarters was in the Netherlands for for a long time. And um, it just so happened that this part of the business for Sonos Installed Solutions was gaining a lot of focus and traction. And as that with that, there were more resources being created. And over in the European region, there had never not there not there had not been as much focus on that part of the business as there had been in the Americas. So I had the opportunity basically to go take my experience with Sonos and this Installed Solutions business and go over to Europe and focus on the, the broader EMEA region and really um, you know, drive some internal awareness to the Sonos or to, to the installed solutions channel, you know, how different it is from retail, as we know, um, and then really build the, the strategy from the ground up on the go to market side to really help uh, help accelerate the growth of that business for the, the European region. And you, you and your wife went so uh, and you said your wife is actually from Canada originally, is that correct? She is, yeah. She's she's from Canada. Um, like me, she's moved around a lot. She actually spent some, some years in Australia as okay. well before bouncing back to Canada and the U.S. But uh, yeah, we, we moved over there together, um, and we actually uh, we had our first child in the Netherlands. Right. He's just about sixteen months old, so it was, uh, we don't have anything to compare it to because he was our first. But it was, a, it was a pretty different experience from what we hear having a child in Europe versus having a child in uh, the U.S. 
Yeah, I, I I don't want this to, to turn into a new parents podcast because frankly, when I when I had <laughs> first had a, a my my first daughter, I, I everything I wrote had some reverence to my daughter and having a baby and all that stuff. It's it's the only thing you think about for a while. But but the one thing I did you did mention to me, which is really interesting, was the way they kind of send you right home or send the mom right home with the baby, and then but give you care in the home so that you can learn how to be parents <laughs> there in your own environment. That was pretty cool. Exactly. I think the you know the medical approach between the U.S. and Europe is is quite different. And uh, yeah, when having a baby, basically, um, the the child is delivered, and they try to get you out of the hospital as quickly as possible, which sounds terrible. <laughs> um, but then on the on the flip side, um, for the next week, there is someone that comes to your home every day for three, four, five, six hours, and basically teaches you how to be, be a parent. You know, <laughs> teaches you how to change a diaper. Um, you know, helps with feeding with with your child, and even does some some things around the house if you need it. So it's you know, on one hand, it's a little bit of a negative, I'd say, compared to the U.S. because you're rushed out. But on the other hand, you know, having that that in home care is pretty special, especially for new parents who uh, have barely you know held a baby before, like <laughs> myself, let alone change the diaper. So it was uh, immensely useful to have that help at home. Yeah. By contrast, I had my uh, daughter Ella, uh, our first child. Um, 15 years ago now, um, in New York City and in New York hospitals, you get to stay a little bit longer, but they aren't exactly helpful there. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> it's that uh, New York attitude with the nurses, at least the one we had. And my wife and I were panicking because our daughter, who we were supposed to be holding and taking care of and learning, you know, kind of bonding with, uh, got the hiccups. And so we we called the nurses station and said, "What do we do?" She has hiccups, and I guess the answer was to hang up on us because we were being ridiculous. <laughs> so, so we're like, "Okay, I guess we're on our on our own with the hiccups." And it seems ridiculous now that we worried about that. It's like, why is why is the baby doing this? Um, yes. Anyway, so well, congratulations. That's that's amazing news, and it sounds like um, Thank you. A, a great opportunity just to to see part of the world that, uh, obviously it's in, in your heritage there. And, um, but, uh, now you were there during COVID times as well. So that must've been an extra challenge, uh, to be, uh, in a new environment and having it, little ability to was, get out. <laughs> yeah, no, we, we, um, in our first year, we lived in the heart of Amsterdam, you know, not non COVID time. Okay. So, uh, Pretty, pretty magical experience, but um, you know, as a lot of people know, a lot of people like to go to Amsterdam because it's a great place. So it becomes very touristy, which as a resident is not as great. Yeah. Um, but year two, we we moved out into the suburbs, um, essentially for a little bit more relaxed lifestyle. We found a nice townhome with a yard, and we were fortunate with COVID because generally the Netherlands is not known for great weather. You know, it rains a lot, yeah. um, which can get a little depressing, but uh, it was kind of magical. Once COVID started, which was more or less when our son was born, for the next six weeks, it was beautiful, sunny, spring-like weather. So, um, you know, while we were kind of, quote unquote, trapped at home, at least we had nice weather. We had a yard. We had some parks we could walk to. Um, so for, for us, it kind of worked out. And as a new parent, I think in the COVID era, uh, it, it was almost a blessing in disguise because normally I would have been commuting to the office, mm. you know, after a week or two. And uh, I just got way more time with my son, Ari, than I, I would have gotten if I had a normal work life, a normal schedule commuting to the office. So um, while on one hand, you know, it was a bit of a shame that we were so trapped and maybe couldn't bring him to other places, other countries in Europe, which is generally so easy. You know, we um, we had a lot of time together in beautiful weather. So, um, you know, we, we can't complain. Now, a very important question about your son. Can, can he ne never become president of the United States because he was born in Amsterdam or in, uh, in, in the Netherlands? I'd be, you know, I'd have to get uh, someone from the legal side to check me on this, but uh, he already has two passports, a Dutch passport and a, and a U.S. passport. So I think he could. Very good. I don't know if um, you know he'd have aspirations well, for that, but uh, well, you, time will tell. Yeah, I don't know why you'd want that job, but uh, <laughs> you, you don't want to hold a guy back if if that's his aspiration. So, well, well, good to know. Exactly. Well, uh, the reason why you're here is to talk about this uh, this brand that you're working with now. And when I got a pitch for it um, from one of your colleagues um, or agency, I thought immediately just from the visuals that this was a really cool uh, dimmer switch, essentially. Uh, very uh, visually appealing. And so uh, then I realized that you were working with them. I was like, okay, now I've got kind of tying these things together. I need to learn more about this. And so you and I did talk a little bit earlier about it, but uh, um, can you 
go back in time a little bit to talk about when the brand was launched prior to your tenure with the company um, and what some of those initial um, goals were about why does this this new switch need to exist when there's other switches out there? What was the sort of the motivation at that initial stage? What about five years ago when it was launched? A little, little bit longer. So 2014 is when the, the company was founded and okay. um, it's, it's a pretty simple story. So one of our co-founders, um, Colin Billings, who's our CEO now and, and my boss at Oro, he was having trouble sleeping at night. And um, like many of us, he looks at screens all day. And as we know, screens and eyes, you know, don't really play well together in terms of sleeping and, and those sorts of things. So um, he found this technology for uh, computers that you can download called Flux, which essentially adjusts the brightness throughout the day to ease your eyes. Mm -hmm. And that little change actually improved his, uh, his sleeping problem. So he had, he had this thought then, you know, in my house is where I interact with artificial lighting more than anywhere else. You know, surely this concept of, of lighting helping me on a day-to-day -day basis just live better, you know, that must exist. So he started doing all this research back in 2014 of all the lighting technologies and, and products. And, um, you know, short story, he, he, he couldn't find anything quite like this. You know, you had a lot of connected lighting products that could do this or that, but no one was really taking this human centric approach to lighting. And, um, he and a few engineering buddies then founded this company, Oro, which basically the mission hasn't changed from the get-go. It's, you know, how can we take the, the lighting that you interact with in your home and how can that actually improve your life on a day-to-day -day basis in terms of really playing into, um, you know, your circadian rhythm, your wellness, you know, how can, how can lighting not make you sleep worse at night, at night, but how can it actually help you sleep better? How can, how can your lighting system actually give you more energy during the day? Um, so I think that's really what, um, what makes Oreo quite different than a lot of c companies today. And um, it's, it's an opportune time for us because as we've seen, this term wellness has exploded over the last couple of years, especially with COVID. Uh, people are looking at things like air quality for the first time in their home. And um, you know, what's great for us is we were founded on this human-centric wellness approach to lighting. Um, so anyway, fast forward um, a, a few years and um, the company develops our first product, which we call the Aura Switch, um, which you will find today, which um, essentially uses uses technology to make your life at home happier and healthier by basically um, creating the right lighting environment for your life, depending on what time of the day it is, depending on your, your lifestyle, um, ultimately giving you more energy, energy during the day and, and helping you sleep better at night. So what's cool about this is that, yes, you're, you're building a dealer channel uh, for custom integrators, which is important to a lot of the folks that I speak to, um, the professional integrators, the Cedia channel. But it started off as a consumer product as well. So if you are the type that doesn't mind switching out a switch, a uh, light switch and doing the wiring, you can do that and you can set it up with just one or a switch to start with you and, and still get the benefits or some of the features, right? So it's a cool little stepping stone yeah. to get into this where you don't have to commit to an entire system right out of the gate. You can kind of play with it and see what it does and then commit to further um, products. So what exactly it's not it's it's not different than something like Sonos where, you know, people start with one, two, three speakers and they, they love the experience it brings to their life. So then, you know, with a professional installer or their own, then they, they add to that and or a similar, you know, you could do a whole home full of lighting, which in our channel is not an uncommon thing. Mm -hmm. But, you know, similarly, a lot of people will start with two, three, four rooms of Oro and they just love this experience that it gives them of not having to think about lighting anymore and, and just helping their 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 daily energy levels and sleep levels. Um, and then, you know, over time, they just can continue adding to the system. Right. And to, to further clarify what it is that it does, obviously, it, it can dim the lights and and that's a dimmer. That's what we've all been accustomed to. Um, but it also has other inter interactions where um, you, you've got that what ambient light sensor and motion sensor. So it can sense presence in the room. So if you wanted it set to only come on and, you know, there's individual pieces that can be in a lighting control system like that, but this is one unit that can do all of that, correct? Exactly. So um, when we wanted to solve this problem of, of improve of ha having lighting improve your day to day life at home, 
we wanted to do it in a way where the technology works for you. You know, our kind of belief of, of quote unquote smart home as a whole is that, you know, the best technology is the technology that you don't have to interact with a lot that that does things just by knowing the environment and, and takes action for you. So when we started building the product many years ago, that was really the kind of philosophy that went into the product. You know, let's put as much technology in here with software that creates this experience we want without the actual the user having to do too much. So to your point, you know, inside of this one dimmer switch, which fits right into a Decora size box, you have a motion sensor, an ambient light sensor, proximity sensor, a two microphone array and a speaker. And then when you couple that with the software that we have, you get this magical experience where using the word presence, you know, Oro knows when you're in the room, it knows when you enter the room. So it knows to turn on the lights, you know, it can see how much light is coming in from outside. So it knows what level of lighting it should, it should put the lights at. Um, it knows when you leave the room, which is important from an energy savings um, perspective, you know, energy savings are more important than ever. And as you know, there's so much lighting energy wasted every year. So we feel like it's our very, very small part in the, you know, the globe to save people a little bit of energy and save the environment, that lighting energy. Um, what it also does, because we have kind of these layers of sensors versus just having a motion sensor like you find with some products is, you know, when you enter the room and it detects your motion, the lights turn on. But um, if you don't walk by the Oro switch for a while, but you're still notably in the room because you're cooking, you're watching TV, your kids are running around, Oro can sense that because it has these microphones. So it knows to turn to keep the lights on where more basic systems we've all experienced, you know, they, the lights turn on, which is great. But then 10 minutes later, you're still in the room and the lights turn off, which is a bad experience. So um, essentially it, it always knows the environment and it makes the lighting decisions more or less on its own. So you don't have to think about it, but Oro also remembers every time that you physically touch an Oro switch, every time you use the Oro app, um, and then basically takes your custom preferences plus knowing the environment and basically molds the optimal lighting system um, around you with, without you really having to take much, much action. So if you had a, you know, a home full of Oro, you could, you know, theoretically, you can just walk around the home and the light follows you and you never have to touch a light switch, which for the average person is a pretty compelling story, given how many times we, we all interact with dimmers and switches on a day to day basis, we fumble around with them, we come home from work with kids and groceries, and, you know, it's just a bad experience. So now if you can just enter your home, the lights turn on, they turn on at the right level. It's just a, a pretty magical experience that we can create um, on the lighting side. And then, of course, we do uh, a little bit more as well than just lighting. Right. Well, that motion sensor uh, use case that you just talked about was something I experienced firsthand. I, I have a motion sensor switch um, with, with a full lighting control system in my home, but I have it in my uh, entryway out of my garage. And that's where my washer and dryer, I decided to take my washer apart. And that's a lengthy uh, anger inducing process, <laughs> watching YouTube videos <laughs> and rewinding YouTube videos and for fast forwarding YouTube videos. And then the motion sensor would turn it off, turn off the light. And it was getting to be, you know, twilight. And it's me waving, trying to get my light back on and making myself, <laughs> you know, more happy uh, while I'm doing it. So, so those, I get that, that experience for sure. Um, so I do want to continue our conversation, but first we're going to take a short break. This episode of Residential Tech Talks is brought to you by Ring, home security systems and smart home automation. Get protection at every corner with their intelligent security cameras, alarm systems, and video doorbells. Receive notifications when motion is detected or check on your home anytime with Live View in the Ring app. Help keep your neighborhood safer with the Neighbors app to share information and discuss safety concerns in this hyper-local social networking platform. Ring's mission is simple, make neighborhoods safer. Discover all the smart home security products by Ring Go to ring.com. Welcome back. I'm talking to Patrick Gall, head of de channel development at Oro. Um, we were talking about um, the the intelligence that's built into the Oro switch, and um, you were talking about how the the sensor uh, can turn off the lights when there's no motion in the room, there's no uh, sound in the room. If you didn't want that to happen, you could create a scene though as well, like you do traditionally in lighting control. So. Yep, you can absolutely create scenes where, um, you know, if when you have dinner, you always like these lights to be on at certain levels, you push the dinner time scene on your Oro switch or your Oro app, and um, that happens. Um, 
to to what you're saying as well, something important is we're we're very privacy focused. That's obviously become a big uh, important area uh, over the last couple of years with uh, lots of hacks and flaws of technologies, unfortunately. And um, we have a lot of technology built into our product that can do a lot, but um, everything is customizable. So if you're a little bit more privacy focused and you never want the microphones in a product to work, you know, in the oral product, you can change the sensitivity of our microphones mm. or you can just turn them off completely. Okay. Um, same thing with motion sensing. Of course, motion sensing we, we think is pretty core to our product and makes it so great. But if for some reason you don't want motion sensing to happen with an oral system, you can turn that off completely. Okay. So uh, we do allow the homeowner to kind of um, use their level of comfort with tech and privacy to uh, dictate, you know, exactly what they want our system to do versus what they, they don't want it to do. And are those changes done through um, an Oro app or what, what, what's the control or the programming part of it for the consumer or the, or the integrator? Exactly. So you can do quite a bit on the Oro switch itself, the device itself, in terms of control and some settings, scenes, that sort of thing. Um, but we have an Oro app for Android and iOS, and that's where you can get deeper into the settings. Um, that's where when you set up the system, we have this, this kind of wizard that walks you through a few questions to help Oro better understand, you know, where is your light switch in relation to the room? Because as we, as we know in our homes, you know, I don't think light switches are always uh, placed in the, the, the most optimal place point in a room given um, they might be around the corner, even though the room's over here. So these technologies are, are more challenged in those cases. So um, with the app, you, you can do all that. And with the Oro app, you also then at all times can see all the lighting in your home. You can control the lighting, whether uh, you're at home or, or away as well. So um, that, that is currently what uh, the Oro app can do uh, today. And as far as installation goes, your, your traditional wiring, you, you do need the neutral uh, wire. So it's not something that you'd want to use on a really old house, but most houses do have that neutral wire. Um, and then you have options for three way and all the different, uh, challenges you might face in a, in a certain layout in a wiring scheme in a room, I guess. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, we, we have one SKU today. So, um, with that SKU, it's gotta be pretty versatile to, to, um, do about just about everything. So whether it's replacing a simple, um, light switch, if it's a multi-way setup where you have multiple light switches, excuse me, that can control um, the same lights. Um, if it's working with LEDs versus fluorescent versus you name it, we support just about every light bulb. Um, and one of the interesting things is um, we call it the Oro switch. It's really more of a dimmer. So we might, we might change that name <laughs> at some point, but um, it can also act like a switch. Um, so when you set up an Oro and you do the install, which is, which is very easy, um, it asks you what type of light bulbs you're working with. And if you choose fluorescent, which are non-dimmable lights, the dimmer turns into a switch automatically. Mm. So normally you could, you could dim the lights, you know, 10, 20, 30, or whatever percentage in between. But um, when it's using something like a fluorescent bulb, you know, you have an on off toggle. So the, the, the same product kind of acts as a dimmer or a switch, depending on what type of light source you're, uh, you're working with. Great. And, and as far as other um, cool features, I, I think the initial, uh, press release that I received was about the Alexa built-in um, feature. So now you can use voice control directly to the to the switch to control your lights, not having to interface with a separate unit and all the delays that come with that, I guess. Exactly. Really, everything we've talked about so far is part of kind of the, the lighting sphere that Oro can, can work in. But there's this whole home control or smart home side that Oro also plays in where, um, yes, we have built in Alexa, which just launched a few weeks ago, which is super exciting. Uh, so you, no longer you do you need a, a third party Alexa or an Alexa device in between to do Alexa things. So that could be controlling your lighting. It could be controlling audio. Anything you have hooked up through Alexa, you can just natively talk to an Oro switch. Um, but that's really just scratching the surface. You know, we always believe that our platform could do more than just lighting and it could also provide connections to the rest of the technology in your house. So um, the other side of Oro is the fact that we have capabilities to control things like your Sonos audio system through Oro to control Ecobee thermostats to unlock doors um, and a, a host of other smart home offerings. So you really get this nice hybrid of, of an intelligent lighting system with intelligence really unlike anyone else, plus smart home control, Plus you have built-in voice, and then we actually didn't even touch on intercom yet. You have a built-in intercom as well. So 
Um, if you have a couple rooms of Oro, you can just talk to different to talk to the rooms. You can target all the rooms. You can um, target individual rooms. You can also mute rooms if you want to. So when you think about everything we just talked about, it's all packaged into one box that fits into a normal decor size wall box with a, a simple setup for the professional installer. So you're really getting a lot of capabilities really built into a, a, a very simple to use and simple to set up system. Without the benefit of a um a visual here for those who are listening to the podcast. Uh, it, it's a, it's a bit like a little touch panel, um, as well. That, that's what it looks like. So, so I don't think we've really described the, the image that caught my eye when I first saw it. So how would you describe it since you're the one kind of presenting it to people for the first time? <laughs> yeah. So, um, design has been a, a core principle of Oro from the get-go. Um, you know, there, there are companies out there that want to basically take your iPhone screen and put it into a, on, on your wall uh, or, or a larger touch panel, which for some people is awesome because they get this big real estate to do all kinds of stuff. Um, but we also know there's, there's a big portion of design center customers who want technology to blend into their home. So when we set out to make the product, we actually wanted it intentionally to fit into a normal decor size dimmer box in a wall. Um, so we, we achieved that, which is great from a design perspective, but we're still able to put in a touchscreen with, within the, that product that allows you to easily control the lights, that allows you to control your Sonos or um, any other smart home device. So while the screen itself may be much smaller than what you find on even your own uh, phone screen, you still have enough real estate there to be able to um, basically do what you need to do with the tech in your house that, that really matters. Now, when you and I talked, and this may be something that was good behind the scenes. I don't know if you want me to mention now, but there was a brand that you brought up, which is called Brilliant. Um, that's a kind of a luxury sort of stylized switch. Um, could you tell me again what the comparison was in terms of what how, how you differentiate what uh, Oro is doing versus that brand? Yeah, of course. I think, um, you know, from my perspective, you know, at the highest level, Brilliant and Oro do two, two of the same things. They both do lighting and they both do smart home control. Um, I think what's really different is, you know, Oro took a very lighting first approach. You know, and once again, that kind of human centric lighting approach where Brilliant, you know, who does use a larger screen, they really wanted to take, I think that, you know, iPhone screen and put on your wall to give you more real estate. They really focused on the control side of things. And I think that's, you know, where they've had success is by, you know, giving, giving their customers a, a control interface um, for a, a different price point than some of the other systems we, we find in our channel. Um, but I think they focus a little bit less on the lighting than we do. So, you know, we really focus heavy on the lighting and do something different than, than really anyone. But then we also layer in the smart home control, uh, but we do it in a little more subtle way because of the way the product, you know, just kind of fits into the design of that room by just fitting into a box. Um, so really, yeah, I, I would boil it down to a big difference in kind of lighting focus and, and lighting control, and then just a, a different way to represent um, a control interface for the for the customer. And I mentioned, I mean, obviously, you're you're creating APIs for for brands um, that that you need to interact with uh, in the smart home, um, like a like a Nest, for instance. But uh, mm -hmm. you're also willing to and and maybe discussing with uh, other control manufacturers and lighting control um, companies to perhaps have partnerships there? How would that work exactly? Yeah, we have this philosophy uh, or principle as well around being open. You know, we believe the more stuff that Oro works with, the, the better the platform, the more valuable it is to everybody. Um, so that kind of goes to, into two areas. So um, on the lighting control side, you know, there's a lot of good lighting technologies today. Things like smart bulbs from Philips Hue, while not as popular in our channel, have gotten pretty big, you know, globally. Um, so today you can actually already integrate Philips Hue with Oro. So if you had a room where you had, you know, some in-ceiling lights and you had a, a table lamp with Philips Hue, um, that can actually all work together with Oro and you can even control the Philips Hue through Oro. Um, but that's really just scratching the surface for us. We have this whole effort around third-party lighting control because once again, we, we believe our, you know, quote unquote, special sauce is this, this layer of intelligence when it comes to lighting. We believe that could actually add value to other systems out there, like take a Lutron or a Leviton or lighting from companies like Crestron Control 4. Um, we believe, you know, in a future world with the right API connections and partnerships, you know, we could make those systems smarter and work better. You know, why couldn't Oro's ability to detect, to de detect presence 
turn on, you know, lights from Lutron in the future, um, as an example. So, you know, we're not quite there yet. And of course, you know, it's an interesting conversation with, with these companies, because on one hand, you know, we're, we're talking about maybe being partners. On the other hand, we're all fighting for the same wall box. So it, it's a, an interesting conversation, but um, that, that's really where we believe the opportunity is, you know, the, the, the technologies can play well together. They can create better customer experiences and we can really add that layer of intelligence that those systems don't have. Um, and same goes for something like a, a control system from Crestron, Control4, Savant. Um, you know, they make their own lighting solutions, of course. But, you know, we envision a world where maybe you have a, a home full of Crestron, but you've got a few pieces of Oro sprinkled around that house that are giving you an extra you know, layer of intelligence when it comes to lighting that still interacts nicely with um with the system itself. So th those are the types of conversations we're having now. And, and uh, yeah, we're, we're hopefully marching towards a world where um, Oro fits in nicely with control systems and, and other third party lighting systems. And then, you know, we kind of act to a degree as a bit of the brain of the system, at least on the lighting side, and ultimately just, uh, yeah, hopefully make the system better for everyone. So um, as you develop your role with Oro now, um, you're obviously uh, well-versed with the custom integration channel and that's where you're there to kind of connect the brand um, who started off more consumer facing to the professional channel. So what challenges do you have ahead now as you develop this role with Oro? Yeah, I think there's, um, you know, a few things for one, um, you know, we don't really have a big brand yet as, as you could, I guess, and imagine, you know, I, honestly, I had not heard of Oro until I found the job posting um, earlier this year. So a big part of our focus, you know, as we build up the, the channel is really brand awareness. You know, we just need to get the brand out there, um, which is why I'm very, you know, fortunate to be here with you to, to help with that a little bit. Um, I think another area is, you know, maybe at the, <clears throat> At the highest level, someone might look at our product quickly and think it's a DIY product because it's it's very user friendly. It's it's um, you know looks very very simple. Um, and as we know in our channel over the years, there's been a lot more DIY products and brands that have gained traction that you know the the installer might it not, might not love. So I think there's a, a little bit of that is is you know my job and, and the job of Oro is to prove to the channel that you know we're serious about this channel. We care about the professional installer. And we're not just a DIY brand that's trying to work with a bunch of installers. You know, we're actually completely pivoting the company around this professional installer channel. And really from this moment on, all decisions moving forward are centered around the installer. So, you know, what are the next integrations we work with, for example? You know, right now we we work with a lot of the big consumer brands, which I'd say are kind of table stakes today when it comes to a system like ours. But, you know, we know there's a lot more of um, those integrator friendly brands that are much uh, much more loved by them, like a blue sound for audio or like the Crestron's Control 4's Lutron. So um, as we start to push out new integrations, they'll be more designed around the installer. As we think of ways to simplify the setup flow, especially for 10, 20, 30, 50 units at a time, you know, that'll be designed about, around the professional installer. So I think part of, part of the challenge is just proving to this channel um, that we are, uh, you know, we're, we're here for the professional installer. We're not we're not looking to go into Best Buy and Home Depot and Lowe's and and you know I have battle scars from Sonos <laughs> of some of the conflicts that that being in all these places can create for the professional installer. But uh, we're laser focused on on this channel, and um, that's one of the things we we hope to to you know prove to everyone with, with our actions as we come out with new hardware, software, our go to market strategies, that sort of thing. Well, it's exciting. Um, you've got uh, a lot of work ahead of you, of course, but I think it's a it's a really cool product and uh, has a good story to tell. And that's really um, a, a good starting point for for you with a new brand. So I, I wish you well. Thanks, Patrick, for joining me today. I really enjoyed talking to you. Yeah, thank you very much, Jeremy. This was great. And uh, I look forward to staying in touch and talking more about Oro in the future. Thank you again. Patrick Gall is head of channel development at Oro. You can learn more about the brand at getoro.com. That's G E T O R R O.com. And that wraps up today's show. If you're new to Residential Tech Talks, please be sure to share, subscribe, rate, and review us on Apple Podcasts. And check out all the latest residential tech news at restechtoday.com, where you can also subscribe to our Tuesday and Friday newsletters. Until next time, please stay safe, stay inspired, and let us know if you have a great story to tell. Res
Residential Electronics and Lighting Specialist to Arc Residential to Mass.